A golf ball is hit into the air with a speed of 30 meters per second and an angle of 60 degrees. There is a 10 meter tall fence 70 meters away from where the ball was hit. Does the ball make it over the fence? All right, what information are we given? A golf ball is hit into the air with a speed of 30 meters per second and an angle of 60 degrees. There is a 10 meter tall fence 70 meters away from where the ball was hit. We're gonna assume the ball is hit from the ground, so let's draw the ground, the ball, the initial velocity vector, and the fence. The fence is 70 meters away from the starting point, and it's 10 meters tall. Let's place the origin right at the initial position of the ball, so the ball starts at x equals zero and y equals zero. And we know the vertical acceleration is negative g. Now let's write out the values that were given. The initial velocity is 30 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees. Since we're not given any other information, we'll assume that angle is relative to the ground. X initial is zero meters and Y initial is zero meters based on the origin we chose. What would be the final X and Y positions? Are they 70 meters and 10 meters? We'll come back to that in a second. We're not given the initial x and y velocities, but we're given the magnitude and angle of the initial velocity vector, and the initial x and y velocities are the components. When we're given the initial velocity vector, we almost always start by finding the components. 60 degrees would be the angle between the vector and the x component, which is parallel to the ground. Using this angle, the initial x velocity would be 30 meters per second times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 15 meters per second. And the initial y velocity would be 30 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees, which is 25.98 meters per second. But let's leave them as vi times the cosine and sine of 60 degrees, so we can plug in the exact numbers at the end instead of rounding them now. We know the x velocity is constant, so the final x velocity at any point is just the initial x velocity. And we don't know the final y velocity. So the question is asking whether the ball makes it over the fence. We don't know the exact path of the ball. It could go over the fence, or it could fall short. In terms of the physics variables we're using, what does it mean for the ball to make it over the fence? One way we could solve this is by finding the height of the ball when it has the same horizontal position as the fence. If the ball is higher than 10 meters at that point, then it makes it over the fence. So in that case, we're looking for the final y position, or height, when the final x position is 70 meters, the same as the fence. The other way we could solve this is by finding the horizontal position of the ball when it's at a height of 10 meters. If the ball is to the right of the fence at that height, it made it over. And if it's to the left at that height, it falls short. So in that case, we're looking for the final x position when the final y position is 10 meters. We'll try both methods, but for these types of problems, the first method is probably easier. So which equations can we use to find the final y position when the final x position is 70 meters. The first y equation doesn't include position. The second equation does, and we know everything else, except the time, so maybe we can find that. The third equation includes position, but we don't know the final y velocity, so let's use the second equation. How would we find the final time? If we look at the x equation, we know the initial and final x positions and the x velocity, so we can use that to find the time. Then we can plug that into this y equation to find the final y position. And if we think about the motion, these steps make sense. We're choosing an x position, and we want to find the y position at that point. There's no equation that directly relates the x and y positions, at least not in this course. So we're taking that x position, 70 meters, 
then finding the time when the ball is at that position, and then we're finding the y position at that time. So let's start by finding the time. Remember, this equation is just the velocity equation rearranged, so we can use either one. If we take the velocity equation and multiply both sides by delta t, and then divide both sides by vx, we have delta t on the left. Then we can plug in 70 meters for delta x, or 70 meters minus 0 meters if you want to use the final and initial positions. Then we plug in the value we found for vx, which is the initial x velocity, 30 meters per second times the cosine of 60 degrees. That gives us 4.667 seconds for the time it takes the ball to travel 70 meters. Now we can find the final y position at that time using this equation. We plug in 0 meters for the initial y position, 30 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees for the initial y velocity, 4.667 seconds for time, and negative 9.8 meters per second squared for acceleration. We rounded time to three decimal places so that our final answer is more accurate, but we also could have plugged in that full expression for time instead of calculating it, but the equation would get pretty long. So when we calculate this, we get 14.5 meters for the final y position. That's the height of the ball at 4.667 seconds, and it's the height of the ball at an x position of 70 meters, which is the position of the fence. The fence is 10 meters tall, and the ball is higher than that, so the answer would be yes, the ball does make it over the fence. Now let's solve this problem the other way, by finding the final x position when the ball is at a final y position of 10 meters. Now, the final time is determined by the y position, so we start with this equation to find the time. We plug in 10 meters for the final y position, 0 meters for the initial y position, 30 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees for the initial y velocity, and negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration. To solve for t, we need a calculator with a solve feature, or we need to use the quadratic formula. But here's what we get for t. 0 0.418 seconds and 4.884 seconds. Remember that the graph of this function is a parabola, and there's always two times when an object is at a certain height, unless it's the maximum height. If we look at the path of the ball, it's at a height of 10 meters as it moves up and when it falls down. So let's find the x positions at both times using this equation. We plug in 0 meters for the initial x position, 30 meters per second times the cosine of 60 degrees for the x velocity, and both values for time. That gives us 6.3 meters and 73.3 meters. Those are the two horizontal positions where the ball is at a height of 10 meters. The fence is at a horizontal position of 70 meters, which is between those two points. So looking at the picture, if the ball is at a height of 10 meters to the left and right of the fence, it must be higher in the middle, so it makes it over. Again, solving it the other way might be easier to think about, but either way works. Now let's check our answer. We got the same result solving it two different ways, so it's probably right. We could plug the final x positions and the final y position from the other method back into the equations to check if the equations are true. Another thing we can do if we have enough time, and we really want to be sure we got it right, is to walk through the problem a second time to see if we get the same values again, and check that we didn't make any mistakes with the math. 